And for our final slot this afternoon, um, Kelly is here to talk to us about EdShare Hub. Thank you very much. So I'm from the Computer Science School at the University of Southampton, where I'm part of an enterprise team uh, that one, runs within our web and internet science research group. And what I'd like to do today is share some information with you about our uh, solution EdShare um, that was created at Southampton, but more specifically about some of the recent work we've been doing around the creation of an aggregation service layer to uh, aid the discoverability of open educational resources. So if you haven't heard of EdShare before, it's a digital content platform that's built on the open source software ePrints, which is also created at Southampton, and it's been optimized for sharing teaching and learning materials. And many of you may have heard of ePrints already. Um, it, there's a lot of institutions, particularly across the UK, but also across the world that are using it to support open access. But EdShare has been heavily influenced by the design and ethos of the Web 2.0 media sharing sites. And it's part of a suite of products that we have available through our enterprise team at Southampton to support various forms of open. So it was originally created as part of a research project at Southampton known as the EdSpace project. And this was in support of our institutional e-learning strategy at the time. And the intention was to provide a single shared safe storage location for all sorts of educational resources. And this was after finding people were putting educational materials all over the place. So they were closed in the VLE, they were on personal web pages, on networks, on people's USB sticks, and the need to gather this in, in a centralized location so it could easily be discovered um, across the university. But the project was also about a degree of staff change and culture change and facilitating um, more sharing and collaboration across the university. Now I should say this wasn't about creating an OER service for Southampton at the time, but given the timescales that we're talking about here, there was growing interest around open education and OERs specifically, and it certainly was the long-term hopes for that project that this, and, and aspirational, that this would become a project that wouldn't just release materials from the closed spaces such as the VLE, but they could transition to being available across the university and then openly to the world. So the output of that project was the University of Southampton EdShare Instance, which I'll shorten to EdShare Sutton, which was launched in 2008. And following this, we saw an emergence of a number of EdShare platforms that were created to share OERs specifically. And many of those came about as part of the JISC UK OER program that ran from 2009 to 2012. And that includes uh, spaces such as Humbox, which was focused on humanities resources, Swapbox, which was social work and policy, and Language Box and Loro, and a couple of others as well. Now, with it being uh, built on open source software, it's extremely extendable and flexible and adaptable, and that's what we do at Southampton. So we started to repurpose it for other uses as well. So we also created a version to sit behind our iTunes U store. So this was accepting uh, submissions from across the university that were reviewed by our communications department. The content was being transcoded into the required formats and then fed through to the iTunes U front end. Our School of Medicine also created their own instance and theirs was far more about secure access. So they needed to share content with their students, um, but it needed to be controlled and only available to a whitelisted set of individuals due to the sensitive content. And then we started to see a shift to uh, the bigger scale institutional spaces coming on board. So one at Edge Hill, uh, one at Glasgow Caledonian, and more recently at UCL and the University of Glasgow. But there were two key points in this timeline that were really influential that I wanted to highlight. So as with many research projects, and particularly ones that create software, if there's not the funds or people involved to sustain them in the long term, they tend to get left. So uh, our enterprise team adopted the project code that was, that was created as part of that EdSpace project, and we refactored it so that it could be made available as an enterprise offering for other people that wanted to create their own EdShares. And then further down the line, we did some major work on upgrading the, the core solution and creating an upgrade path for those existing platforms and ensuring that it was going to be more sustainable in the long term alongside our other products. So this is the uh, community of EdShares that we have that's still available, um, and some, as I say, some of those recent additions. 
And across all of these platforms, they share a core set of features as part of being an edge chair, but it is extremely flexible. There's lots of different options, uh, and it would take me all day to go through the, the wealth of possibilities that there are with the software. But as I say, this was focused on reproducing a web 2.0 experience. So some of the features that are in there, there's an immediate lightweight deposit. There is no review process, just as you would find on any other uh, social media sort of sharing sites. Um, there's lots of different ways of tagging and organizing the content. There's inline previews of the materials, flexible editing permissions, and the ability to share editing rights with people as well, as well as many other things. But that underlying software that sits beneath that is about open digital content. And what it does is that resources that you create on there, it will make the metadata open. So even if you've created uh, educational materials that need to be closed, the metadata, the descriptions about them, about perhaps who created it, what it's about, the subjects it's associated with, um, who created it, and so on, are available openly on the web for harvesting and to be indexed by search engines. And what we've got here is quite a diverse community, both in terms of that functionality, but also motivations and reasons for having the platform. So we've got some where the focus is open, but also we've got others where it's a mix of closed and open, and that's fine. And just to look at a couple of examples a little bit more closely, this is Humbox, which was one of those just UK OER projects um, and is, is very well known in the OER community. Um, this involved multiple institutions and a distributed project team. And it's uh, available openly for anyone to have an account and create resources on there. So, and about, I, when I was looking at the figures for this, about 99% of the content is open. And I think, to be honest, that 1% is probably a, a couple of test records that I've been creating in there. In terms of uh, the specific features they've got, they've got the ability for people to provide feedback on the materials that are shared, to remix existing content, and the platform then maintains a relationship between those remixes, and provides lots of support around the creation of virtual groups and the ability for those groups to showcase the resources they create or are associated with. Another example is EdShare at GCU, so at Glasgow Caledonian. This is an institutional platform. And this is supporting multiple agendas. So this is supporting their institutional OER policy, but it's also hosting some legacy content from other systems that have been withdrawn from the university and that was no longer funding for. But it's also about taking content from outside, taking the content from out of the VLE, where it was extremely expensive for them to host it um, with the uh, VLE hosting solution. Now, only staff and students can actually log in to have an account to create items in, in EdShare at GCU, but obviously it's open for browsing and there's lots of open content on there. And there was lots of work that we did with GCU around the support and handling of video content. And with it being an institutional system, we've also got it linked in with lots of institutional feeds. So things like um, we've got course feeds coming in, we've got close links with the VLE, and it's linked in with single sign-on. And we also do things like campus recognition or, or VP, network and VPN recognition. So students don't have to sign in if they're on the institutional network. So I gathered together some uh, figures across our community of those edge shares that are still accessible because there are some that have disappeared um, and those that have at least some open content and you see i've grouped the institutional platforms at the top followed by those subject specific ones towards the bottom but what you can see is there's a significant amount of resources that are being shared across our community of edge shares and therefore their existence is already being exposed to the world and amazingly, 55% of those are already open. And of course, this figure isn't fixed. So as I, I took these figures the other day, these figures are going to continue to grow. And hopefully, as we see more edge shares come on board, it will grow even further. And I'm always saying to people, it's fine to have closed content. There is no one size fix, fits all. Some content needs to be remain, remain closed. For some people, it's a transition. If it's been in closed spaces, it can seem quite scary to suddenly put them in the open. But they're in a great place in an edge share that it, from a technical perspective, it's extremely easy to make them open and available to anyone. But when you do have this mix of content, we do need to be thinking more about how discoverable the uh, OERs are, specifically by that worldwide audience. 
because if OERs cannot be discovered from a practical perspective, they may well be closed or not exist. And within each platform, we're already spending lots of time focusing on how we can organize and present the content and support the ways in which people are working, it's using things like course codes, and descriptors, and as I say, linking with the VLE. But as I say, when it comes to OERs, we need to be thinking about reaching that global audience, making them accessible and discoverable to people who perhaps traditionally wouldn't be able to access higher educational content. Now, Google is obviously part of that story, but it's certainly not the end of it. And we wanted to make it possible for someone to come along and search and know that all the results that they're retrieving are open and available for reuse. And to this end, we've created the EdShare Hub. Now, this is a separate service that we are running on our servers, and it harvests that open metadata that exists across our community. And there you can carry out a federated search across the network and have that confidence and convenience that you're knowing that you're only discovering the open content. Now, how did we achieve this? Now, obviously, at the Computer Science School, we like to write code and we can create things extremely rapidly. And this was achieved through the rapid development of a plugin that we've called Syncit, which was developed by my colleague, Justin Bradley, who's the lead for ePrints. Now, the Syncit plugin gets installed on the edge shares um, themselves. And then we have the host service running centrally. Now, let's say we have a, an OER that gets created at a chair at Glasgow. This sends a notification to the hub. And if it's recognized, so we, we recognize and accept requests coming from that service, a request will be sent back to the client for the metadata of that resource. That edge share will then send it back in an XML format, and that metadata gets imported into the hub. And then at that point, it's available for searching. And exactly the same process would apply if you were modifying a record so we can keep up to date with any um, updates that are happening to records all the time. Likewise, if we were dele deleting a resource, so, or for example, if a resource was open and it needs to be closed, a notification will get sent to the hub, confirms the ID and the action that it wants to take place. If it's accepted, it will be processed and the record is deleted. It really is that simple. Now, I do get asked about the sustainability of solutions, uh, our solution EdShare um, and a service like the EdShare Hub. Um, and yes, there are challenges, but there's also a number of strengths about the way that we run. So yes, there's no driver for OER, and we do find that that has an impact. And our work with EdShare is largely focused on champions in the sector, but also applying our own expertise and ideas as we move forward, and certainly as I'm picking up a number of things through the presentations and sessions that I'm attending at this conference. And I should say, when ePrints was first created, ePrints had those same challenges. While we were waiting for those kind of national drivers to come along with open access, we were always working with champions in the sector, and that's still true today. Now, we're not centrally funded at Southampton, so we can't ring fence funding to dedicate to some of these community service layers. But our enterprise team now has been established within our university for over 15 years. We're not for profit, and we exist to sustain the software, which we do through the services we provide. And we're working with over 80 institutions directly to support them or host them. And ePrints itself is used, uh, as I say, across the world. Now, I put this green box, um, it's sort of staggered between the two, because we exist, the, the, the purpose of our enterprise team is we exist to sustain the open source software, and we support those who are using it. Now, this can be a challenge to our sustainability, and I've seen this uh, point come up on Twitter earlier today, because it depends ultimately on how open fits in the strategy of institutions and organizations across the sector, and those making the decisions. So, and we also do find that people's perceptions of open and even open source can be a challenge. So when we see uh, large scale commercial providers come along, you know, we don't have the same uh, multi-million pound marketing budgets that perhaps they do. And in the procurement processes, when we sort of uh, convey the costs for an open source solution such as ePrints or EdShare, 
Um, we don't have the fee in there for a recurring uh, license fee or anything like that to use the software. And you'd think that would be great because it is cheaper than the, the commercial providers. But actually, perceptions of open source from some people sometimes can be that it's a lower quality or perhaps it's too high risk. But this is a mature piece of open software. ePrints has now been around for almost, if not longer than 20 years. It's owned and managed by Southampton University, Southampton. But this can also be a strength because we do work across sectors. We work across people that are working in the open access spaces, um, open education, and um, open data. And we also do find that there's lots of innovation coming from these spaces, and we can apply them and make them available to our community. So looking ahead, um, we are running user group meetings for EdShare. I just had the first one last week at the University of Glasgow, and we're hoping to run that on an annual basis with virtual meetups in between. We've also got an open Google group space for anyone that's interested in being part of the conversations and um, contributing ideas. We will be responding to uh, feedback from some of the rec recently launched EdShares, and certainly locally at Southampton, we're following up with some of our champion users on how EdShares can support them in their day-to-day -day working as well as in the open. And just to highlight a couple of things that we have coming up uh, for work ahead for us, is we've already got in progress that we're working on a uh, preview service and this is in response to Blackboard Ally. Um, that you can up, when you upload content to EdShare, it gets transformed into different formats. Now, we've already been doing this for a very long time, um, but actually what we can do is return it in far more formats if you upload a Word document for it to go through our preview generation service and it returns it to you in various formats. So we want to extend that further and ensure that it's providing it in accessible formats. And something I tweeted about yesterday off the back of one of the presentations towards the end of the day is exploring some integration with Synote. Now, Synote, again, was created at the University of Southampton and is for transcribing uh, media content and, and providing collaborative editing around transcripts. So there's a lot, an awful lot of things, and again, I could, I could talk all day about the sort of things that we want to be doing. But I think I've run out of time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> um, so we've got some questions again on, on the VVox um, about um, sort of how we can reuse them. So what the content on the, the licenses um, and whether people can embed the stuff on their own VLEs. So um, in terms of the most common types of records, uh, it, it depends on the platforms. Um, largely it is PowerPoints and Word documents, um, but the GCU, for example, they use theirs heavily for um, hosting their video content, so lecture captures and things. It really does vary across all the platforms. Um, yes, you can embed content in the VLE. We've specifically put a feature, again, this was developed through the GCU version, um, that you can embed. Um, we, we focused heavily on the audio and video content, the, the embed feature, so exactly like you can do with YouTube, you grab the embed code and, and uh, post it in your VLE. And all of the resources that we create have permanent URIs, um, so if you post them in your VLE, they will roll over to your next academic year and they won't have changed. And um, for the content, is there a specific license? Are they all under Creative Commons licenses for reuse? So the licenses is down to the person that's depositing the resource in question, but all the Creative Commons licenses are there uh, and we can even extend them if there's uh, licenses on there that aren't there currently. And as Creative Commons updates, we, uh, we keep them up to date as well. Brilliant, thank you. Do you have any questions in here? So we have some more questions um, on, online. Um, one that seems to be popular that's got some likes is uh, whether um, EdShare can help with the duplication of resources across an institution. Uh -huh. We do actually have um, on the ePrints, we have created a, a deduplication tool because this is uh, an issue across our platforms on when people are submitting records in support of open access and where we're getting feeds from publisher sources as well. There's duplicates coming through. So we do have a deduplication checker. Um, yes, and there are facilities that when you are creating resource, it does um, checks as you're entering it to see, well, has someone already entered something with the same title, you know, to try and reduce that duplication. So yes, we do have tools in there. 
And um, do you have any data about the extent to which um, your shared resources are used by other users, maybe across universities and things like that? We do have a stats package um, that's added to all of our edge shares, um, uh, and some of them advertise that dashboard and some of them don't. So, <laughs> um, not, so not specifically down to, I think, like school level and things like that, but we certainly do. Um, I think I've put on one of the slides the sort of hits um, from Google um, and from the, they're coming from a variety of sources. We sort of track who the referring sites are, so whether it's coming from the VLE, whether it's coming from external sites. Um, so yes, e each repository does have a, a, a stats dashboard so you can get that data. Brilliant, thank you. So if there are any more questions in here, otherwise we'll thank Kelly and all of our speakers from this session. Thank you. Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with Notable, our Jupyter Notebook service. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.